Our next uh, speaker is Greg Gage of Backyard Brains, and he's going to do a hands-on demo on how the brain works. Uh, Greg's the founder and CEO of Backyard Brains. He's also a published neuroscientist and engineer and has, has developed tools, curriculum, and experiments that allow the general public to participate hands-on in neural discovery. So let's welcome Greg to the stage. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is the brain. This is what neuroscientists study. And so uh, if you're not familiar with what the life of a neuroscientist is, it sort of begins in a place like this. Uh, the only way that uh, you can study the brain is to dedicate your life uh, to do that. And you spend you know, six to eight years in a graduate lab toiling away just to get access to tools to understand how the brain works. And so. Uh, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, it's because one out of five people have a neurological disorder. And how many cures do we have for neurological disease, do you think? Let me hear it. Zero. Not one cure for a disease. Yet the only way that you can actually explore the brain uh, is to dedicate your life to do that, right? And so what we should be doing is sort of reaching back earlier in the education process. Uh, to expose people to neuroscience, and maybe they become interested in becoming neuroscientists themselves. Um, and, you know, it's not that crazy to think of. In other fields, for example, in astronomy, you don't have to get a PhD in astrophysics just to get access to a telescope, you know, and, and you can immediately uh, start to, you know, maybe see how the, the stars move or how the planets move and then uh, become interested in, in contributing to the to science. And so, in fact, the, the Hale-Bopp comet was discovered by an amateur. And so it is possible, uh, but it's not possible to do currently in biology in general and specifically in neuroscience. And so uh, what we did, uh, my, my co-founder, not, not founder, uh, Tim Marzullo and myself, uh, we created sort of a cheap version, like a cheap telescope uh, of, for, for the brain, and so we call it the spiker box. And what it allows us to do is to replace about $40,000 worth of research-grade equipment uh, and make it easy enough that even if you're a fifth grader, you'll be able to start to understand at a very deep level about how the brain works. And so uh, because neuroscience isn't well taught, uh, I'm going to have to back up just for a minute, and I'm going to explain a bit about the brain, and then uh, we're going to do some hands-on demos, all right? Uh, so, uh, we'll start with this. Uh, this is the, the human brain, uh, and we have about 80 billion neurons inside of our brain. And so, uh, a neuron is a cell, it's a uh, specialized cell, but it's, a, it's got a cell body, and it's got uh, what we call processes. These are things that stretch away from the center of the cell, uh, and it has a specialized one called an axon. And it's down the axon that everything that we know, every memory that we have, you know, your first kiss, the smell of your grandmother's basement, is all encoded by information passing down that axon. And that information comes in a very particular form. Uh, it, it comes in, in the form of, of electricity. Uh, and it comes in the form of an act potential which is basically a fancy name for a voltage that quickly jumps up and back down and returns back to the baseline. It does this really quickly. It can fire an axe potential up to 500 times uh, a second. So, uh, but these are all buried inside of our brain and throughout of our nervous system that runs throughout our body, and you probably have gone your entire life without being able to know uh, how that works. And so what we've done as a, as a company here based in Ann Arbor is created technology that we can let you, the general public, or uh, you know, students in schools, be able to do experiments that record from these neurons right here uh, in, in animals and in humans as well. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to get a volunteer from the audience. Uh, if I can get some of the lights. I, see some, I, I can barely see anyone here. So I see one. someone here, what, yeah, vaguely. You can come on up. Uh, and we're gonna record now this round of applause for our brave volunteers. We are going to record now from uh, the human brain. And so normally, if you were in a research lab, I wanted to record from your brain. What we would have to do is drill into your head. Uh, and we're going to put, okay, so. <laughs> uh, what is your name? Adam. 
I dig your style, man. All right, so, uh, <laughs> but we're not going to do that today. So we're going to do what's called a biohack, all right? And so we're going to uh, do something else. And so you have a strip of brain right here uh, called the motor cortex. And what do you think the motor cortex does? What, is motor, what do motors do? Me? Yeah. Uh, controls the body? Controls the body, yeah. So it controls the muscles of your body. And so you have in the output layer of the motor cortex, you have the largest cells of the neocortex called the BET cells. And they're going to cross over in synapse, which means it makes a connection. That axon is going to touch another neuron. And it's going to uh, make a connection there. It's going to come out to your arms or your legs. Uh, and it's going to allow that. So when you move your hand like this, you keep moving your hand. So you can imagine inside of here, there's a neuron controlling that motion uh, inside of there. So it's going to send spikes or these axe potentials down to the spinal cord and then out to your arm. It's going to cause that muscle to move, all right? So what we're going to do now is that we are going to record from the output of that muscle, which is connected to that neuron. And so we're going to be able to hear and see what your brain activity looks like. So you're going to give me your arm right here. I'm going to put an electrode here. This is a, a little bit of salt water with some metal on it. And just like many things in science, you make things bigger, right? So uh, telescopes make distance planets bigger. Uh, microscopes make small cells bigger. What do PCR machines do? Does anyone know? It makes DNA bigger, so you can see it. And so this is what we call a bioamplifier, which makes very small voltages uh, bigger. And bio meaning from a, from a living organism. All right. So we're going to relax now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug you in here. And I'm going to turn this on. And when you're ready, I want you to squeeze your hand like this as you're rubbing a motorcycle. All right. So now what you're listening to, squeeze it a lot. Like, that is the, the, the motor neurons that in here that are synapsing here and causing ax potentials inside your muscle to cause that to move. We call this the electromyogram. But what it is, it's actually your brain connected uh, to, uh, to directly to this amplifier right here. So what we can do is we can, you know, this is tech track. This is boring, man. This is all analog. We need to, we need to, you know, step it up a few notches. So what we can do is we can connect you directly to a computer and be able to do some interesting things with that. So I'm going to take this, and the first things we're going to do is I'm going to plug you in to here. And so that electromyogram that we were listening to before is now being fed into a small microcontroller. It's in a, a, a mini computer. And when you squeeze your hand, you and go ahead and squeeze it again. So now you're controlling these LEDs. So this is a, a, the simplest form of a brain machine interface. And so if you're into physical computing, it's like the hello world, right? You get lights to turn on. So squeeze really hard to make it go red. It's like a love meter, right? You're, you're burning hot, you know, this is like cold fish, all right, whatever, I don't know what the other ones are, all right. But the idea is that, uh, so we, what the idea is that your brain is sending a command that we can pick up on a computer, right? So this is now a brain computer interface. But we want to do something a little bit more special with that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna have you write some music. So I have a little synth card in here. And so when you're ready, go ahead and, and, and hit it again. Okay, now go. You can imagine all the, all the practical uses for this device, you know. You just think of it, just your mind wanders. Okay, all right, but we can do something else with that. That's, that's the brain uh, DJ interface. All right, but we want to do other types of brain computer interfaces. So I want you to hold this with your other hand. All right, and then we're going to plug this into here. And this is a robotic claw. And so we can also make the computer do other things, right? We're going to program it. So when you squeeze your hand now, so hold it out so people can see that. And then squeeze your hand. And now are you controlling that? And relax your hand. I'll squeeze it again. There you go. So this is a brain machine interface where you can start to think about how this could be used, right? And so it actually it is used this way. So in, uh, in the Cleveland Medical Center, they, they splay out the muscles. They record from people that had spinal cord injuries. And they're able to, yeah, thank you for grabbing that battery. All right. So, uh, but, so you can do useful things with that, all right? So uh, what we've shown here so far is that we're able to record your brain activity and be, get it to do things. But you want to do something even cooler, right? Uh, so I need one more volunteer from the audience to come forward. Say. Yeah. Perfect. So come on down. All right. So now what we're going to do is we now know that your muscle works, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're going to do now is what is your name? Heidi. Heidi. We are going to record from Heidi's brain, all right? 
And we're going to see if, if we can send her brain signals into your arm right here, all right? So, Heidi, if you step over here. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, take this arm, okay. And I'm going to place the electrode on you. It's got metal, is. Does that make a difference? No, that should be fine. We're cool. Uh, so then I'm going to hook you onto here and here. So remember that with the electrical activity sound like there's a whooshing sound, which is the electrical activity from action potentials. And if you squeeze your hand again, like this, like you're revving a motorcycle, all right, perfect, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output of your brain and we're going to send it into your arm where your brain would have been. Can you hold this in your other hand? Which part of it? All right. Yeah, just hold it right there for a second. So what we're going to do, we're going to do another biohack. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap into his arm where his brain is sending it back out and controls his hand. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to stick it over here on a nerve that we can easily stimulate. This is your funny bone. You ever hit the funny bone and it, and it hurts? That's because you hit this nerve right here and it causes like this weird feeling up in your brain. But it also controls your fingers. And so what we can do is we can tap into that. And what we can do is send... Your electromyogram that's coming from your motor cortex here, synapsing in your spinal cord, coming here, we're going to send it into you, and then we'll be able to have a human-to-human -human interface. And so you guys are two organisms, but right when I plug this in, you guys become one cyborg now, all right? And so I'm going to uh, turn this on and, and, and just relax your hand this way. And you're going to feel something tickly back here, but it's actually not, it's, you're not going to see it here. You're going to see it up here, all right? So when you're right now, just give me a little pump, all right? Just do it, yeah, just get like that. And then I'm going to turn up a little bit. You feel that a little bit? Yeah. I'm going to try just a little bit more. All right, so now we got it. All right, so this is perfect. So we have, <laughs> so we have a human-to-human -human interface. I, I think we're at that. I think it's, it's, you guys get the idea of what we're going to do. I was going to do a bunch of other experiments, but I'm out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. And so you guys can wave goodbye. You can make him wave. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So thank you so much. I'll, I'll unhook you. And thank you for being a good sport, especially you. All right, you guys can have a seat. You guys can keep those as souvenirs. All right, and I'm out of time, but I will just say that uh, we are back at Brains. We are at the Tech Trek today, but more importantly, we are at All Hands Active, which is a makerspace where we're building the technology of tomorrow, and we're looking for volunteers uh, to take part in some of our experiments. And so if you have some time this summer and want to help us out, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much.